Hi, welcome to the Film Prop channel. Today I will explain a dramatic comedy from 1994 called, It Could Happen To You. Please support me with a like and a comment. That way you can help the channel grow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Charlie was a regular cop who knew how to listen to people, he was a really good cop. He lived happily in Queens, where he was born and spent his whole life. Charlie was married to Muriel, who hated him. She really needs money, which Charlie can't earn because he doesn't take bribes. There is also a waitress named Yvonne. Her husband got into debt, which she now has to pay off. The girl tries to explain her hard life to the judge, but the law is the law, now she is bankrupt. This whole trio lived in a town where people pray every day for a miracle. For example, about winning $64 million in the lottery. One morning Muriel tells Charlie that she is very confident that if he buys a lottery ticket, it will turn out to be a winning one. Charlie goes with his partner and buys the ticket, after which they go to the cafe where Yvonne works. The partners order food, but because of an emergency call, they never get to touch it. Charlie goes to Yvonne's to pay the bill, but when he looks in his wallet, he finds that there is almost nothing there. He has enough to pay for the meal, but not enough for the tip. What to do? The man says he'll go back to the same cafe tomorrow and give her half of the prize or he'll just give her the tip if the ticket is not won. The girl incredulously agrees and Charlie runs off on the call. In the evening, he plays baseball with teenagers outside his house. His wife already manages to get him while he's just resting. All she has in her head is money and nothing but money. The lottery she's been waiting for starts on TV, but when she looks at the ticket, she notices that Charlie has got one digit wrong. He thought their anniversary was the 26th, but Muriel thinks it's the 27th because that's what the paperwork says. This makes her very angry and she swears at her husband. She hears a voice from the audience telling her the number of the winning ticket. The number 26 is heard. Muriel screams, they hit the jackpot and won the lottery. True, they had to share with the other winners. They now have $4 million. Charlie stares at Muriel for a long time, hesitant to say anything, but soon he does decide, he owes half to the waitress. Yvonne, meanwhile, is feeling as depressed and devastated as possible about being bankrupt. Muriel squeals, begging Charlie to renege on his promise, but he can't. He has always been an honest man, and he still is. The man discusses it with his partner, but he stands by what Muriel did, not even listening to Charlie, just imagining what he would do with the money. The policeman does go to the cafe to give the girl the money and catches her at work. She apologizes for yesterday because she acted rude and talks out loud about the world. She has a very big and kind heart, but sometimes reality hits so hard that it becomes uncomfortable and right now Yvonne is having such a period. She always loses her glasses, which every time end up on her head, and that is why Charlie gives her a chain for her glasses, so that she could not lose them for sure. The girl becomes insanely pleased and Charlie asks more about the mishaps Yvonne mentioned. She talks about the death of her dog and the divorce from her husband that can't go through because of the bankruptcy that happened yesterday. He gives the girl a choice, double tips or half the lottery winnings. She chooses the latter and is shocked by the news and screams at the whole cafe. Everyone looks at the girl, who runs around the cafe hugging everyone. A little later she hands out ice cream to anyone and everyone, while her devil may care host carefully writes down the price of the ice cream for her. The girl suddenly stops and says she can't accept such a generous gift, but Charlie insists she agree. On the way to the winnings party, Charlie tells his wife that they should share the money, figuring that Muriel can make a name for herself with the deed. When they arrive at the event, Muriel immediately talks about it, hoping to star in some commercial, and the reporters run around the three of them, because it sounds so strange, the man tipped the waitress $2 million. The man is handed a certificate of winnings. The news breaks all over the newspapers and ends up on the front page. Charlie goes shopping with his wife, giving alms to the poor along the way. Suddenly, an animal rights activist douses her with red paint. A cheering crowd greets them outside the house. Yvonne comes home and listens to messages on her answering machine. Among them is her ex-husband, a swindler who has decided to take advantage of her good fortune. She asks him to stay out of her life and hangs up. Charlie and his partner go into a man's house to get coffee and the cop quickly figures out that the store is being robbed in secret. They back off with his partner and Charlie sneaks through the basement to the criminals, almost giving himself away, but at the last moment he throws a can at the criminal's head, catches a bullet from him and knocks out the other bandit. For this brave act, he is awarded a certificate of merit, and he goes on sick leave after donating 10,000 to widowed police officers' wives. When he returns home, he sees that Muriel has made a complete overhaul of the house. Charlie sees his partner and they pass by Yvonne's cafe. Not that she bought it out, but she has continued to work there herself. Charlie gives his partner tickets to the game, which are hard to come by. He's happy. 
Charlie and Muriel go to a party on the ship. The girl immediately meets a successful rich businessman who talks tirelessly about money, as she does herself. Charlie goes out to get some air because she feels uncomfortable and notices Yvonne. She couldn't deal with the cab driver, who wouldn't give her change, but Charlie helped by paying for the girl. They sit down to dinner at a restaurant and share their experiences after the miracle that happened. Yvonne says that, like him, she decided to stay with her job. He says he was embarrassed to go into the cafe yesterday, but the girl asks him to be sure to stop by next time, she has a table with Charlie's name on it where she feeds the homeless. They talk to each other about marriage. Both he and she have absolutely no luck with partners. They watch someone else's wedding, and Yvonne decides they should go dancing to the jazz playing. They find themselves so close to each other that it makes Charlie a little uncomfortable. The man says he can see her in his spare time and that's where their meeting ends. The girl disappears into a cab and Charlie finally returns to the steamer. Muriel hasn't lost it at all. The businessman she has been chatting with all evening gives her his card. The next day, Charlie and Yvonne, as promised to each other, meet at noon and decide to go roller skating. Charlie falls into the pond in the park and that's the end of their walk. They seem to become more and more friends, developing a liking for each other. Charlie and Yvonne decide to throw a little party on the subway and pay all the people a fare. Then they go to the baseball field to see the kids and play with them and Charlie's partner. The partner notices a flaring spark between Charlie and Yvonne. The way they look at each other, the way they touch hands, you can immediately guess that they are in love. When they arrive home, Muriel throws Charlie's things on his head and tells him off for everything. She clearly despises him and brings everything to an apparent divorce. Yvonne, on the other hand, finds her ex-husband in her home. He pulls $50,000 out of the girl, but she gives him nothing and goes to the Plaza Hotel. Charlie leaves with his suitcases and one of the teenagers asks where he's going, the man replies that he's going to a cheap hotel. The boy convinces him to go to the plaza. They meet Yvonne at the front desk and talk about what brought them here. After they go to their rooms, Yvonne stops by to see him. She is shy, but the man invites her inside. They talk about bathrobes in the bathroom, but a sudden spark causes Charlie to take the long-awaited first step and kiss the girl. The paparazzi meet them outside the hotel. Charlie arrives at the divorce proceedings and finds out that his wife intends to take his winning share. The man is willing to sacrifice his money, but that's not enough for her. She intends to take the money from Yvonne as well. Charlie asks her to be sensible, but she behaves disgustingly. The man lies down at his partner's house, for now he is quite poor. The next day the trial begins in court. Charlie's lawyer brings it up to the point that it was because Charlie picked the number 26 that they won the money. Muriel starts making up tales about her late father. The prosecutor constantly pesters Charlie and Yvonne with his absurd and idiotic questions. It is impossible to believe that this is happening on a legal level, because this man has made Yvonne look like a money hunter and nymphomaniac to the whole country, but the girl held on as best she could and managed to say a touching speech about how everything that happened to her is a real miracle and not a planned gamble. Finally, the jury reached its verdict. Yvonne and Charlie will have all their money taken away. The girl runs away while Charlie tries to catch up with her. Muriel is very happy with this arrangement, as is her new lover, the same rich man from the ship. Charlie goes outside in his tuxedo and walks until dark. Yvonne, meanwhile, stands on the shore and looks out over the water. The former policeman becomes a policeman again. One evening he walks into Yvonne's cafe and sees her at a table. She doesn't want to see him because she thinks she ruined his life. He says he feels like he's been without his other half for the last few days. It's not about the money. He may have lost the $4 million, but he has gained something more, love. A homeless man knocks on their window, sheltering from the rain. The girl lets him in and treats him to some soup. Yvonne suggests moving somewhere and Charlie reminisces about a cousin in Buffalo. They are going to hide for a while from this embarrassment. Suddenly, this homeless man turns out to be a famous photographer and captures them on a camera strapped to his arm. He writes about their love in the paper, writing that despite their dire financial situation, they let him in and fed him giving him some last-minute money. This makes the front pages of the newspapers. They decide to go inside the cafe before it finally closes and see a pile of letters with checks and money inside. The photographer encouraged people from all over the world to donate money to them and everyone really started sending them money. They deserved it. In the end, it turned out that New York City had tipped them $600,000. Charlie went on to work as a police officer, just as Yvonne went on to be a waitress. Yvonne's ex-husband became a cab driver instead of an actor. Muriel married a rich businessman who soon took her money and ran away. She now lives with her mother. Charlie and Yvonne live in a town where people pray for a miracle every day, and sometimes miracles do happen. Charlie and Yvonne take off in a balloon on their wedding day.
The balloon has a newspaper clipping printed on it, a policeman marrying a waitress.